Man's quest for knowledge knows no bounds. Man's quest for God has been there since time immemorial. Religions after religions were formed by man, lakhs of books written and yet today his thirst for knowledge is far from over. In Bharat as well, God's search goes back to Vedic period. So today I have a very special guest with me. He is an astrophysicist taught at the University of Toronto for over 35 years and presently he is retired and giving his services in the Arya Samaj Mandir in Mississauga. He was one of the founding members of Arya Samaj Mississauga in 1985. His name is Dr. Ravi Srivastava and I wish to welcome him. So today uh, I have a very special guest uh, on the panel with me, uh, Dr. Ravi Srivastava ji. And uh, Dr. Ravi Srivastav, I welcome you on uh, the on this show called India Talk. And uh, before we begin, I want to start with a small prayer. Um, and and uh, we'll start with Asatoma and Sadgamaya. So, Asatoma Sadgamaya Tam Soma Jyotir Gamaya Brit Yorma Amritam Gamaya. This shalokas from the Upanishad mean we pray to Almighty God, bless us with knowledge and wisdom okay. so that we can distinguish between right and wrong. Bless us with knowledge and wisdom so that we perform good deeds. And finally, bless us with knowledge and wisdom so that in, uh, we can guide other people in the right direction. Dr. Ravi, what, what I want to know is that uh, we, we notice that in the, in, the, in the present times particularly, uh, the Hindu Samaj particularly has forgotten the Vedic uh, scriptures, there's apps, almost no talk about what is written in Vedas, how to follow that. Uh, we have different, uh, you know, sects within our society. We don't know which one is correct. So, in, in my understanding, Vedas are the most important scriptures in our uh, tradition. So, what I want to uh, ask you first is, and which I think my, my children also have asked me uh, many times, how do we define God? Who is God or what is God? We have different names, but what it what it is actually? What, what does the Vedas say about God? Uh, God. Our, uh, Gauravji, our biggest problem is to answer that question is a very complex question. And people have tried to put their own conception about God. Hindus think God as a superhuman being sitting maybe at Kalash Parvat or sitting in all those murtis. Christian and Muslim believe God is living up in heaven, but according to the scientific knowledge, earth is round, so there's no up and there's no down. So the God cannot be up. Also, all religion of the world, they accept that God is formless and is everywhere. Every religion believes that. But the question arises, what is that thing which is formless and is everywhere? Now, to make it simpler for the children and so on, I'll give, start with a practical example. Gauravji in our house, we have stove, we have fridge, we have television, we have microwave, you have all the other facilities, right? Right. Now, and you are operating all of them and all of a sudden they all stop working. What will be your conclusion? Why all of a sudden all of them stop working? Most probably electricity is not there. Electricity is gone or somebody turned the switch off. Now what is electricity? Electricity is electric current. That electrical energy was flowing through all those appliances and they were working. Right? This body, our this body, inside this one there are a lot of similar appliances, mind, intellect, buddhi, chit, and ahankar, these are the major ones. To run them, to make 
we need something similar to electricity flow of electrical energy. That thing is what we call soul, conscious energy. The difference between the electric current flowing through the appliances and this energy flowing through us, that appliances, they do not feel. They cannot cry, they cannot speak, they cannot laugh, they cannot think. That energy flowing through the instrument is inanimate or inert or unconscious energy. The energy flowing through our system here is conscious energy. And this conscious energy has many, many characteristics. Okay, That's the first thing we should remember, that the thing that makes this thing work is what we call soul. Now, Gaurabji also, the next question arises, all these appliances, facilities we have, somebody must have made them. Right, I, that was um, my, my next question actually. Who created all this? What, what energy what, created that? Yeah, the sum in terms of appliances is you had a person who collected all the material, put them together. Similarly, for this computer, the program we have inside, we need somebody who can assemble, who yeah. can make it, you know, so that we can use it. That person, so that person we call it, or so that energy is what we call super conscious energy. Super conscious energy is the creator of all these parts we are talking about in our body. And super conscious energy we call by the name God. Conscious energy will run this part is called what we call soul. That's in a very simple way to explain. Now, the other thing we should also remember, Gaurabji, if you look at the universe, okay, universe also two things are moving. You can look at the inanimate object first, stars, planets, so on. They are moving, they are growing, and they are decaying. What kind of energy does that? That is what we call God or super conscious energy. How do we identify that energy? We identify that energy wherever there is a motion, wherever there is a decay and growth, that energy is present. That's the proof. You look at plants, you look at trees, us, we started with a sperm and we grow into, uh, we grow in age, old age and so on. Finally, the end comes the cycle. See that the main thing we should remember the purpose of that super conscious energy whom we call God is two things. First, the operation means creation of everything is created by that God. And God has that energy, super conscious energy has basic laws. That law cannot be broken. Universe you look at runs systematically. There's no chaos. Same if you look at a plant starts with a seed, proper growth, and changes into a tree. Tree is already inherent in the seed. So wherever you see this action happening, movement, growth, and decay, that super conscious energy is there. Where is soul, conscious energy, running to run the operation? Wherever there's action being done, that con conscious energy is present there. We do the action, we have it. Animal do the action, they have it. The, sometime Indians say that plants and trees have the feeling. No, because they cannot have the feeling. They can have the, if we believe in their research and thinking, but they cannot have soul because they are not doing any action. Soul is only present in human being and in animals. Right. So, uh, we since we are talking about Vedas, so uh, and you know, in in uh, in Sanskrit or Hindi, we we call this prapanch. So we have so many prapanch around us that sometimes we just forget uh, what what the Vedas actually talk about um, about God. 
uh, it's a formless and um, e even uh, the i think the sikh scriptures also the guru granth sahib also talks about it and it says akal murat ajuni sahib hum uh, but since you know we we are mostly uh, we have kind of trying to forget each and every uh, vedic aspect which is very scientific based on the scientific knowledge uh, of our uh, maharishis now uh, and uh, so that brings me to another question now if god is one if that is just a super conscious energy then you know uh, why why do we worship so many different gods particularly in uh, in in the hindu heritage the that's again going back to the history i'll give you a little story if you we have a little time yeah we have time no problem there was an old lady sitting outside a temple begging for the money so that she could eat a saint passed by and he saw this lady begging he came to her and she said why are you begging she said while well, my son was here when he was here gave me the money now he has gone to foreign country and uh, he has not sent me the money except he has sent me little piece of paper so i have nothing to eat so therefore i'm begging so the person the saint asked her all right can i go along with you to your house so he went there on the wall she has put 50 these papers on the wall and when he looked at them they were the draft 50000 rupees each so this lady had no clue that she has so much money so the saint told her and she was very happy the same situation is with us all the scripture we have we have painted them on the wall or we do the puja whatever but we don't go and open it and read it okay now the word puja comes from the sanskrit word puj puj mean to revere to revere mean get the quality if it's a person the quality of that person is the puja if you do the puja of vedas it is whatever is in the vedas learn them and practice them that is basically the meaning of ved worship now what happened in the history up to mahabharata period and even later on till lord buddha there was no worship of any statues and so on there were no statues people used to meditate do havan yaj that that's the way he used to realize god and so on when lord buddha died he told his disciple do not make any statues of mine but they went ahead and they made the statues then mahavir the jain person he also told the same thing to all his disciple do not make when they went ahead and made so hindus got scared they said everybody will convert to buddhism or jainism we have to do something so at that time they told the artist to put the pic attributes of god in a picture describe god so that people can understand from the picture even though god is formless they can pick up certain aspect of god so that was the purpose at that time of creating a picture and idol so people used to at that time they used to sit look at the picture of the statue each part they try to comprehend the meaning of that and then they started practicing it that is the real worship they used to do and the puranic people started then they started this mm -hmm. so that is where the biggest problem is i tell everybody i being an arya samaj student that i am not against puja but i am against the puja you do that is not puja so if we all sit now that is where the understanding comes look at any you look at uh, shiva shiva is god name mm -hmm. saraswati is god name if you look at the picture of saraswati for each part is depict the qualities of god but god has the attribute the gunas and that we don't look at it we just simply do the puja and that's it so that's 
the real meaning of worship. We all, even if we start a little bit, every year, whenever you know, the Deepavali come, let's look at the Lakshmi picture and go through each part, what each part is trying to tell us. And then we should try to implement. Gauraji, just in a simple term, Lakshmi is God. Names come from the Sanskrit root Lakshmi. That is why at that time we make a decision. We New Year start. We say we have to do these things in our life. We make a resolution. That's what Deepavali's main message is. Set up your goal. Set up your Lakshmi. Right. Right. And, and I think... Um as you know for the for the vedic knowledge what what i i in in my personal experience is that first we don't read vedas if we read it we don't follow them and uh, the i think the last aspect which is the most important is uh, is our application of that knowledge in our personal lives uh, what what are the vedas talking about uh, what is the clear message what is the message for the humanity and i think being a being a hindu uh it's 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 not only living life you you came here you existed and then you went away there is there's a certain purpose of you being here you are here to serve the humanity and sacrifice um, you know for for a greater cause that uh, now moving on to the next question uh if god is everywhere and this is this is i think that, that is what the vedas also talk about the god is everywhere then why should we why sh why should we worship idols or go to temples we as i mentioned the god of ji to do worship we do not need a temple worship is the first step is whatever aspects you want to bring into your life god aspect god has infinite number of qualities you take a picture or go to the books. Now, books, as you said earlier, unfortunately, people have failed to explain the Vedas. Even earlier stages could have been Upanishad too and so on. Or even Gita too. Simple thing. Vedas are a little bit hard to understand. But what we have to do, if we really want to do the worship is, doesn't matter what pictures you have in front of you. You can, sometimes people tell me, oh, I need a picture or a statue to focus. No, you don't need that. You can focus on any part of your body. But first you have to remember what to focus on. What thing I'm trying to bring into my concept so that I can practice it. That's where we all fail. Give you a very simple example too. We do the yaj. Yaj is part given to us that we should do. Why should we do the yaj or havan? Basically, the purpose is to purify the air, but it teaches us a lesson too. And lesson is to do selfless service to others. We recited the judge many, many times, Edan Namam, Edan Namam. But we don't understand. Edan Namam means do things to others. Now, for that, you don't need a temple to do the service. And so what we really have to do is as you mentioned earlier too, we Hindu, Hindu is a word coined by Greeks when they came to India. But we are not Hindus. According to Vedas, the human civilization, you know, the name of us is, or our religion for all of us is, religion of humanity. That's what our religion is. And since God is one, we are all children of one God, created by that creator. So now, all the religions are man-made, but our only one religion is treat everybody else like a human being. And one thing to treat everybody else is doing the best you can for others. Now, Hindu word was coined, as you know, by Greek when they came around the river Shindu, they couldn't say sure. So they called everybody living in this area as a Hindu. My concept of Hindu is, I have done a lot of interfaith dialogues. In one of the dialogue, a person, a Christian person asked me, are you Hindu? I told them I wish I was a Hindu. They looked at me, I said, well, yeah, by people so-called called me Hindu. 
But to me, Hindu stand for H for honesty, I for integrity, N for nobility, D for devotion, U for unity. So then I said, I wish all of our are Hindus. And they understood. They said, yes, I would like to be Hindu too. No, it's a, it's a brilliant example, and I think uh, as as mentioned in uh, in Vedas as well, you know this kind of knowledge is definitely needed, not only for for the children. I think a lot of adults, and in, that includes me as well, we don't we don't understand the concept. And like it's it is said, sa vidya ya vimuktai. So the kind of knowledge we should have, where it is able to, uh, you know, disseminate. and destroy all the darkness and jaise ki hum kehte hain ki prapanch jo hai wo sab khatm ho jaye is tarike ki hamari vidya honi chahiye now uh, with with this thing uh, i just have i just have want to add a small uh, question here uh, why don't we read vedas when even bhagwan shri ram or or even uh, bhagwan shri krishna they read it they went uh, i mean bhagwan shri ram he went to guru vashishtha's uh, ashram and he studied vedas so what is it that hindus are uh, worried about uh, what what is stopping them to read their own scriptures most of the times i i listen that uh, you know if you if you read gita uh, you get all the answers uh, from from the from for for your life but gita is just one of the upanishads which is the vedanta portion uh, of our vedas and it is one of the uh, 108 upanishads well there are more than 200 upanishads but uh, at least uh, from the main 108 upanishads the gita is just one of that and since we don't and and when when people talk to me no. that uh, you know gita we, once you read gita everything is you know falls in place what i ask them is that uh, then you know my question is why not vedas why not go ahead and read the vedas it uh, garvi let me correct you first gita is 40th chapter of yajurved the first mantra of 40th chapter is the whole gita Krishna ji was so intelligent vedic knowledge he elaborated in detail the meaning of that mantra and that is the key gist which as i said earlier gita says that keep on doing your action and krishna ji said leave the rest to me now what when he was mentioning me mean that super conscious energy he was representing we all should the first thing we should all start with as a kindergarten as you raise the question who am i am i this thing for which i spent my whole life am i something inside because we all know that this thing is going to perish that's what gita says too right this mortal body is going to perish inside which i am is going to be a mortal and leaves for live forever then we should raise the question why i am here why the i have come here in this world i mean every day we do the same thing to why i'm doing this job and so on. and if we want the answer to both of them then we have to start with the first question you said what is god and what is soul we have to look at the two and link mm-hmm. now god is as i said super conscious energy if you look at all the energy we know electrical light sound heat they have limitation they are certain limited of frequencies right certain band and they can do only that purpose they are inert but god being super conscious energy is a band of infinite number of frequencies anything you want in terms of knowledge in terms of doing actions and so on is all there the only thing what we have to do is we have to tune we have to link okay like first veda rig uh, rigved is all the knowledge you want anything you can think of is there yajurved all the action we should do so that we can achieve what we are looking for is there 
and so on and so forth. So what we have to do uh, to answer your question, first we have to start from the beginning. Who am I and why I'm here? To do that, we need knowledge, like you said. And knowledge, we need not books you and I cannot read because it's very difficult to understand. We need people who are knowledgeable, who are intelligent, who have read all those books and simplify for us. And that's the tragedy. In India, we may have people with knowledge and so on, but they are sitting back. They are not explaining things. Majority of them are taking the advantage. I call them pseudo gurus. They are there to, for their own purpose, making money and so on. So what we really need people who can guide us. And then with their help, we'll start understanding all these scriptures and then start practicing it. Our biggest problem, God of GS, all of us, we may have knowledge, but we are zero in practice. Right. And that's why we cannot link with that super conscious energy. You don't need knowledge to do service. Right. To I, th I think uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a society, uh, Hindus, you know, uh, because I, I think I would be highly critical of myself than to others. Uh, I think the other day we were talking about how uh, Sikhs are doing selfless service in Gurudwaras. Even the kids, when they when they go to Gur Gurudwara, they are not hesitant uh, to do any sort of service. But, uh, you know, the question which I should ask myself, am I teaching those things to my kids? And if not, uh, may maybe the the fault is lies at my end. Because I'm not doing it, I can't expect my children to follow the suit so i think uh, for us we we need to um, increase and improve on our actions and not just words not only that gaurav ji the thing we should realize which is the truth the super conscious energy the god has basic laws and two functions Super conscious energy, as I mentioned to you, is infinite number of knowledge vibration. That vibration we can pick up from that and tune. Mm -hmm. And the other reality law of that super conscious energy is that whatever deeds we are doing are automatically being recorded in one of the sections here. We call it subtle body. Automatically. All of our previous record is all there too. So when the soul leaves this body, when this body becomes useless, that is the only record that is going to go with us. And that's based on that record, the energy is going to do permutation and combination and give us next form of life. If we understand that, that is the only action that are going to go with us, nothing else. We'll treat everybody like a human being. Why would I think bad about you? Because that's going to be bad record on my computer or on my sub subtle body. And the other thing, Gaurav, I tell you, I mentioned the other day, I was doing a, a oven at somebody's house. When we go to US, we convert Canadian dollar into US dollar, right? To spend. When we go to Europe, we convert that into Euro or Euro. India, we convert into rupees. Have we ever thought of when we leave this body, when I mean leave, we mean the soul, what kind of currency we're going to take with us? Right. Karmas. That's the only currency that's going to go with us. Right. So that way, since we are all children of one God, you should not seek that way. They do not do up, I'm going to do the service only to seek. We are all children of God. Every religion says that. So when, if I consider myself a son of God, I will treat everybody else the same way. The same way. Service. I mean, it doesn't cost us a penny too. I mean, service also, when we do prayer, if you, that's a service too. In your thoughts, you are saying positive vibration, creating positive vibration. And if we all link with that super conscious energy, which has that, vibration to give to us mm -hmm. guide us we'll get it you know, 
the our biggest problem with hindus yeah, are that we do not really understand what our scripture try to tell us and whereas sikh gurus they learn from us sikh gurus are basically hindus and and also you know gurus they never went to university or colleges and so on god given knowledge to them they were highly elevated souls and they continue doing those things in life so my thing will be to our children to all of us is we tell them be a human being treat everybody and always remember it's your action what you do is your record and that's what you are going to be judged on and i think we all will be happy and uh, we can serve the humanity very well very rightly said uh, dr ravi i think uh, on this note i would like to uh, end this conversation it was a really really fruitful discussion and uh, knowledgeable session i i'm sure it is it is going to be a very knowledgeable session for our viewers as well at least it was for me personally and we hope that uh, we learn out of this uh, this knowledge and do some actions to create a better world not only for for uh, for hindus but for everybody in this world i thank you again so thank much you. for your time and uh, it was really pleasure to have you on the show my pleasure and all the best namaste namaste, namaste.